All right, folks, welcome to episode six. Here I wanted to just take a step back and show where we are versus what our final part should look like. Once again, here's the final part. This was made by a professional machine shop, and here's where we are right now. The one difference is that I've added this uh, center pocket here to use as an XY uh, coordinate to re-zero my part every time I put it back in the vise. And as you can see from episode five in the CAD drawing, my zero point is right at the corner here. So I'm using this for the uh, and this edge to find the, the x, y, zero, zero coordinates of the part. What I'm going to do in this episode is uh, go ahead and pocket this part all the way through so that we're going to see that come through on the bottom here. What that's going to allow me to do is use that both for a fixture and once I need to flip the part, I'm going to have a reference point to uh, cut out the part on the back side. I'm also going to go ahead and middle of the circle here, which you see cut out here, as well as make this larger circular pocket that's only a little bit, uh, only I think about 5,000 deep, and then, or excuse me, uh, 50,000 deep, and then also create this center uh, sort of hole and pocket that goes deeper, that goes all the way through uh, right there. The first thing I'm going to do is measure how far down this pocket is right now. So I'm using my caliper and if I test the depth I'm at about 0.25 inches and if I look this part right here is 0.53 inches just rough numbers here so that means I'm gonna have to mill this pocket down uh, 0.28 inches but I'm gonna reference off this top part of the surface so I'm gonna have the mill start milling at negative 0.25 and go down to negative 0.53 and that should create a full pocket through here. So here we are in Bobcad version 22. I'm going to go ahead and do a mill two axis pocket. And I'm going to mill out the square that we see here in the center. I, I just showed you this. We're going to mill this. Uh, it's already been partially milled, but we're going to mill it all the way through the part. So in my edit geometry, you'll notice the top of part I'm going to enter as negative point two five inches which is because I'm going to zero off of the flat surface of the top of that piece of aluminum but I'm going to actually start milling a quarter of an inch down. I'm going to take pretty conservative cuts here so 35 percent over on um, conventional milling. The reason so and you'll see here my total depth is I think we said point uh, excuse me point three and I'm going to take once again conservative cuts it's because I'm using a more expensive end mill um, and it's also going to be a longer uh, longer shaft, so it's a little less rigid than my normal ones. And I'll show you that here in a second as we start milling. But um, don't want to have any problems with the accuracy. Also don't want to break the more expensive end mill. It's still a 1 8 inch end mill. I'm going to go 6750 RPM, 7 inches per minute on the, on the movement and 1 inch on the feed vertical. And I'm also going to cut to create a finish pass here with the same feeds and speeds. 7 inches per minute one inch per minute on the Z. So I right click and choose compute toolpath and you'll see there we go. If you notice the green lines don't start until a quarter of an inch down. There's a gap that I'm pointing to right there and then if you look there's um, pretty conservative increments. I think I just said that they're 0.03 inches each as I'm milling all the way down to the bottom and then when I get to the bottom it will take a slightly larger profile cut all the way around the part that will uh, true up the edges. I want these to be pretty accurate because I'm using this to uh, find my x, y coordinates. So that's important that they're on. This is the standard 1 8 inch end mill that I use. These are uh, Chinese made. You can buy them from Enco for two or three bucks a piece. They are double ended two flute 1 8 inch end mills and uh, they're great because uh, if you break one you don't worry about it too much. However, the problem here is that the parts already uh, drill, uh, milled, excuse me, to one quarter inch deep and the flutes only allow you to cut about another tenth of an inch with this style end of mill. So what I'm going to do to cut this pocket all the way through which is with a total thickness of about half an inch is switch to this end mill. This is a uh, TAIN coated end mill that I don't remember the exact price but uh, I think closer to ten dollars or fifteen dollars so considerably more expensive but will be great for this uh, operation because obviously the shank diameter of the end mill is the same as the cutting flutes and the actually the TIN coating is great because I usually don't use coolant I just use this 
my uh, lock line with airflow, and this helps prevent galling, which is the uh, sort of chip weld that I called it, where the aluminum will heat up and build up on the flute and break your uh, break your end mill. So this should be great for this pocket. For the rest of the operations, I'll probably switch back to this uh, more inexpensive end mill just in case I run into any problems. All right, we're about ready to mill. I uh, did want to let you know that I went ahead and reduced the depth of cut increments down to only uh, one uh, 15,000 simply because I uh, want to be conservative both with this bit because it's a little more expensive and because uh, I've actually got about an inch, inch and a half of the bit exposed below the collet and that inevitably will make it uh, the lateral force is quite weak so I want to be pretty conservative on my cuts so here we go. Just a quick update, I actually paused and I noticed that the very tip of my uh, end mill here, which you're not going to be able to see with this camcorder uh, or camera, started to have a little bit of chip galling or buildup on it. So what I've done is I've just went ahead and drilled a holster through it, um, which hopefully will keep my end mill from having to plunge cut, and this way it can just laterally cut, and I've also just removed a decent amount of material. So we're going to see how this goes. All right, folks, that's it for episode six, uh, but stay tuned. Episode seven is going to pick up right where we left off and continue finishing the, um, the top of this part with the circles in the pockets that we first discussed, and we'll go from there. Make sure to check out the website, www.nyccnc.com, for all interim updates in between the YouTube posts.